Channel 33 News is locally owned and operated in Huntington Beach, California. Please like and subscribe. A Santa Ana jury deliberated for a little less than a day before finding Christopher Ken Ireland, 42, guilty of two counts of first-degree murder for the 2017 killings of Yolanda Holtree and Michelle Luke, as well as a count of arson for setting a blaze at Holtree's home near Bolsa Chica Boulevard and Westminster Boulevard. He faces life in prison without the possibility of parole. Vendors and fans of Pierpoint Art Market showed up at the city council meeting last Tuesday to plead with the council to keep things as they are with the lease agreement. Even though the city has made a public statement guaranteeing an art market at the pier, they are currently taking bids from other operators and looking to make more money with the event. For almost 30 years, I've run this event professionally and treated the vendors with respect. This was started as a city-sponsored event. It will now be a city revenue-making event. The cost will be placed on the backs of hardworking artists. Uh, we are all nervous, as we should be. This is our livelihoods. We work during the week to make our product for the weekend because this is handmade. You know, instead of being on a ship out on the ocean waiting to get unloaded, we make it, you know, right here in Huntington. This is not a hobby for us. This is our livelihood. We need more art in Huntington Beach. Um, I imagine you want more tourists in the town. And what I'm seeing, and all of us are seeing more tourists come and purchase our wares and come back a year later and kind of comment about the experience. Great vendors, we got great management, and we got a great view. What more could you ask for, right? I like this market because it's where I first started and lots of families know I'm there. I don't want to leave because I love it. The RFQ process is effectively a de facto death sentence to the current art affair. The current operator, Pam Free, claims that a new company would have to raise booth rates to provide the city with more money, and that could put three-fourths of the current vendors out of business. Neighbors living around Edison Park also showed up at the city council meeting, and they were in a fury over the renovation plans. Since the city has recently sold Giesler Field to an apartment complex developer, it has chosen Edison Park as the ideal location for a new sports complex. However, the renovation plans call for removing some of the 50-year-old trees that have been there since the 1970s. So I think you're approving a plan tonight that even you don't know how many trees are going to be destroyed in the park. Trees are what we want to keep in the park. They're very important to us, okay? Losing the trees would be a real loss to the park. Nobody in 2021 is cutting down 50-year-old trees. Same. These are some of the trees on the chopping block. And um, I didn't think I was a tree hugger, but I guess I am. And here we are. And those are like 50 year old trees, 48 years to be exact. We can't lose these trees. Thank you. Losing grass for concrete is not something we want to do either. It's very important that we keep the grass and keep the green in the park. We, the residents, see the park holistically. You're looking at the park as the portion that you own. The school district's looking at the portion that they own. Ultimately, you're both laying a ton of concrete. I just don't understand why all those trees need to be sacrificed for parking. I think we're trying to draw way too many people to this park. This area seems dissatisfactory the way it is now, and we do not need two huge soccer fields with more people, noise, lights at night, impacting our quality of life. Next thing is communication. They put a flyer up in the community center. The community center was closed due to for a year and then closed for six months due to renovation. We couldn't see or know anything about it. I'm one of the six homeowners who live on Stillwell Drive. I am here as a very surprised resident who just heard about the redevelopment plans. Why didn't I get a, a knock at my door, a flyer, anything? Thank you. Following public commentary, the City Council met with Chris Slama, the City Director of Community and Library Services, and the project lead for the park renovation. Mr. Slama assured the council members that over 100 new trees will be planted in the park and that the parking lot is just getting moved and not expanded. He also claims that he has received feedback from over 600 residents in the area, but will make better efforts to communicate plans in the future. How did the neighborhood get information about the program that you're, you put together here? We did send out a physical notice prior to going to Community Services Commission to um, residents within a thousand feet of, of the park. Um, and as you heard tonight, there was some frustration of people that didn't, didn't get that. Right. I feel like that's our job to get the information to them. 
banners are pretty cheap and everyone drives past that. Maybe in front of the community center, say a community meeting or something. We have people right across the street that didn't get the message. One thing, and I think and every time we talk about parks, we know what Mike Posey's gonna say about parks, right? How much and where is that money gonna come from? It, it will be a big it will be a big project and probably a big number, but I don't think we're at the point where we can throw out an estimate at this point. So you, you've answered actually two questions for me, uh, which I guess probably the most important question for the public is, is that we're not sending bulldozers over there and chainsaws tomorrow. The city council voted seven to zero for option C. Information on the Edison Park renovations can be found on our website at hb33.tv. I'm just throwing this out there that as part of our evaluation and planning, if we look at, okay, we're going to have some large trees come down, maybe we can have West Coast Arborists cut those trees down and make benches for the park or, or something out of eucalyptus or whatever those trees are. Can you repeat the question? Maybe we can have West Coast Arborists cut those trees down and make benches for the park or, or something out of eucalyptus or whatever those trees are. Cut those trees down and make benches for the park or, or something out of eucalyptus or whatever those trees are. If you want to stay up to date on local issues in Huntington Beach, then please subscribe to our channel. Also on the agenda last Tuesday was the purchase of two Tesla Model Ys for use as police patrol vehicles. According to Sean Crumby, the City Director of Public Works, the Teslas are a better investment than the other popular option, a gas-powered Chevy Tahoe. Comparatively, the Model Y is $5,000 cheaper to purchase and saves just under $5,000 a year in fuel. A point of concern by the council members was the ability to charge the electric vehicles in which Mr. Crumby assured everybody that the police department already has two Phase 2 chargers. The Phase 2 chargers take seven hours to fully charge a Model Y, but the police department is looking to get a grant from SoCal Edison for the installation of some Phase 3 chargers, which will charge the Teslas faster. The total cost for both vehicles is $105,000. The Ocean View School District held a vote last week on the urgent request to the state of California to reconsider or rescind the COVID-19 vaccine for public and private K-12 students as a requirement for in-person schooling. Here's what some board members had to say. You know, then I'm not necessarily anti-vax, I just think I believe that people being able to make the right decisions about themselves and their children. You know that actually there are some studies that say that uh, about upwards of 40% of all U.S. children may have already been exposed to I support the resolution. It does not go far enough. Parents need to make the decision for their children, not the state, not the county, not this school district. Parents are the ones who are responsible. The only way to fix this problem is to replace the bums in Sacramento. The vote passed unanimously and Channel 33 will keep you posted on the outcome of the resolution. Come rain or shine or pandemic, the 59th annual Huntington Beach Boat Parade will go on. And it's a HB tradition that is something quite special. Reminder, the boat parade is Saturday, December 11th and Sunday, December 12th, and boats are wanted. To enter your boat for free, go to hbboatparade.org. Zephyr Barbershop is your neighborhood barbershop. Conveniently located in downtown Huntington Beach on the corner of Main Street and Pecan Avenue, the team at Zephyr are ready to provide you with premium service in a relaxed and comfortable atmosphere. Come in for a cut or come in to cut up is that kind of barbershop. Zephyr Barbershop. We hate to end the show on a sad note, but Gallagher's Pub in downtown HB is closing. They had their last day open this past Sunday and Matt Leifring was there to capture the bittersweet event. Iconic Gallagher is right up there. Uh, they're closing and today is the last day. So here's, here's Scott. Scott! How you doing? Hey man. What can you say? It's bittersweet, right? 100%. I mean, this was... My home bar, Vanessa worked here, my partner under Kieran and Eugene Gallagher, and this was our, uh, you know, our bar. It's iconic, so yeah. Uh, unfortunately, all the issues going on, not just one thing, but a ton of them, we're uh, not able to sustain this as individuals. There's a link to the entire video in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Kimber West.
Channel 33 News is locally owned and operated in Huntington Beach, California. Please like and subscribe. <laughs>